We're not here to talk about the Super Bowl as much as I'd love to. That's uh, uh, always a, a, an easy, exciting one. Um, but rather, we're going to talk about something a little bit more relevant to uh, this audience. I think it's an understatement to say that media is evolving quickly, just to echo Debbie's kickoff at the beginning of the session today. Uh, it seems every week that goes by, there's new developments in the world of media, everything from new streaming services that are launching. We saw Quibi launching at uh, CES not too, not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago. New video apps like TikTok, which we've already mentioned, taking over, actually linking that back to the Super Bowl. It did feature quite heavily in this year's Super Bowl, for those of you who are uh, J-Lo and Shakira fans. And uh, new developments from the broadcasters on a regular basis. Here are just a few of the brands that are competing for share of the, a share of the video entertainment market. And in most of these cases, but not all, they are competing for a share of brand advertiser budget, uh, which many of you in this room control in some way, shape, or form. Some of these services, obviously Netflix being the most prominent example, are providing an opt-out basis for advertising, so consumers can avoid advertising altogether. Netflix had about 3 million subscribers five years ago. That's now quadrupled to 12 million in the UK alone. Needless to say, that is shifting audience behavior. Digital platforms command huge audiences themselves. Facebook has 2.5 billion monthly users globally, and YouTube sports 2 billion monthly logged in users, so probably more than that overall, again on a global basis. And both control about 60% of all digital ad spend in the US, and actually closer to 70% in the UK. So as I said, audiences are shifting their behavior. Here's an example of that, just echoing some of those players I just mentioned. New options are pulling audiences in different directions. Fragmentation has become an everyday word in our industry. We'll take a deeper look at the data in a bit. But understanding the consequences of, of this in detail and what to do about it, in particular from a brand perspective, is critical to the future success of brands. As the complexity grows, advertisers have sometimes felt left out in this. Where do they fit in? What's important to them? How can they make decisions? Our clients have started asking us several key questions. But just to summarize this, it really comes down to where can I find engaged audiences? What does and doesn't work? And how can I make it work, more importantly? Creative is undoubtedly becoming a more important recipe to creating differentiation in a crowded media environment. It's also true that in order to answer these questions, measurement now needs to evolve. Increasingly, advertisers need to look across channels. That's what today is really about. And brands need to consider where the attention lies, how good their creative is, and how they best fit their content to the channels where they can reach their audiences. A year ago, we published a deep dive into, uh, I'm sorry, I was one slide behind. Um, this should have loaded, which are the questions that uh, uh, I summarized very briefly. So there you go, some of the key questions that clients are asking. A year ago, we published a deep dive into how TV audiences are fragmenting and the consequences for brands. We've since looked further uh, into uh, our clients' understanding, or to build our clients' understanding and how we can, we can begin to address some of the questions that I posed, and um, more importantly, some recommendations uh, for you all to take away. Now, a quick word of warning. Um, there's a lot of data here. We will not be talking about genitalia, which I'm sure you're disappointed, as <laughs> seems to be the theme so far. Uh, we got that question just before we went on stage. Um, but there will also be a lot of insights. So we like data. That's, we're not scared of data. That is uh, in our DNA as a business. And today is very much about looking at the data, interrogating that data, and demonstrating what we believe it, it tells. Um, I'm now going to hand it over to the real brains and the true orchestrator of this report. Uh, it's uh, an understatement as well to say that um, uh, Martin uh, did all the work, because he really did a lot of the, the digging into the data and, and orchestrating. Um, he's going to recap what we said a year ago, what we've learned since and uh, the findings of our, our newest research at how TV can coexist with the major digital platforms. And before I do that, this is what the report will look like. You've heard Mind the Gap uh, referenced already. Um, later today, we'll be publishing this on our website to download so you can dig into the details uh, 
in your own leisure and share it with your, uh, with your teams and uh, other people. So over to you, Martin. Thanks, Christian. Um, I've, I've sat here this morning and listened to Debbie's opening address and uh, mentally ticked off every opening line and gag that I was going to use. Uh, and I was going to come up, and come up and say that a lot of the, 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 uh, the threads and the topics of conversation, uh, particularly around influencers or content creators, uh, and the gaming and the moving of young audiences away from television uh, is very uh, similar to what we're going to talk about here. Um, and then I was going to make the point about genitalia, and Christian has nicked that one off me as well. <laughs> um, so all, all gags will be done on the fly. Um, I'll just concentrate on being the eye candy. Now, um, <laughs> the, the, the report that we uh, released last year, um, TV at the Tipping Point, it created a lot of debate uh, in the industry. Um, we focused on where the audiences were going, what the, what the trends were. And, and you, can, you can see, uh, basically, we index all commercial impacts on television uh, from the year 2010. Uh, you can see the decline of the 16 to 17 year old, the 18 to 20 year old, so on and so forth. Um, the older audiences, the, the 45 plus, had continued to grow over time. Um, and in, indeed, 55 to 64 and 65 plus, we forecast would grow again last year. The reason we called it tipping point, though, was 2018 was the first time that 45 to 54s had dropped down below 2010's impact level. 76% of all commercial impacts on telly today are made up by the over 45s. They're an extremely powerful economic group. They have an awful lot of money to spend. They consume a lot of television. They drive an awful lot of ROI. But this debate in the industry, some of it was, uh, was positive. Mr. Ritson, uh, among other things that he said about it, was, um, was very positive and we welcome that. Um, there was one other comment um, from one other uh, industry source who said that it looked like Ubiquity had run amok with a ruler at a perilous angle. Uh, and he phoned me up last week and said, can we just have a chat about Beyond Tipping Point, please? And I said, OK, my, my first slide will be a ruler and a protractor. And he just said, oh, God, yes, I know. OK, <laughs> point taken. Um, so let's look at what our forecasts were against the reality. So the dark blue bars are what we thought was going to happen last year. The light blue bars were what actually did happen. So we thought that 16 to 17 year olds would lose about 22% year on year. In reality, it was just over 35. So these trends were accelerating away as we went through the year. The 45 to 54s were down about uh, in line with our forecasts and the older audiences were actually up just as we as forecast as well. The, the, the chap who did that said it's a bit of a ballsy call but I think those audiences will continue to watch telly. Overall, because of the weight made up by that, that older audience, we thought it would be down about 3.5%. It was down about 4.5%. But as advertisers uh, and as agencies and consultancies, we still have to very much mind the gap because the coverage levels are falling for TV uh, over time. And, and it got us thinking about um, how do we bring a different level of insight to this. How do we look at what the digital channels are offering? We can look at YouTube in isolation. We can look at display in isolation, Facebook in isolation. Um, but we, we wanted to bring uh, something to the table where we can look at across uh, platforms. And so before we start, I should say official thanks to um, Audience Projects, and Martin's in the room. Uh, they were our data partner. They gathered the online uh, data. TechEdge provided the systems that we could fuse with the Barb data. Lumen and System One uh, constantly give us more thoughts and topics for conversation that we could humanely deal with in a 20 minute presentation. So just gentlemen, thank you. Uh, and T-Vision in the States also provided data uh, for attention to TV ads, which actually is, is, is quite sparse um, in the UK. The data, not the attention. Uh, the study itself includes YouTube, includes Facebook, Twitter, Spotify, and STV Player. An STV player is interesting because it's the only broadcast of VOD platform that will allow third party tracking. And that's why Audience Project can tag adverts that went out on there. We can infuse it with the data and at the end we'll show what incremental reach was delivered by broadcast of VOD on top of a TV campaign. <clears throat> so we wanted to measure what these platforms added to our clients' TV campaigns. We sourced uh, the clients from our own uh, roster we wanted different agency groups. We wanted different target audiences, different trading audiences, different weights of advertising, uh, and, um, and different sectors as well to try and get as broad a range as possible. And we ran this across July to December last year. The campaigns were all chosen by the participants. We had no control over that. 
and as a result, we have no control over what we're going to see. We didn't deliberately try to skew it more 1634 or more ABC1. We just said, you know, tag up the campaigns and let's see what comes through. So uh, for the slightly older generation, this is the science bit. Some will remember that advert. Um, the terminology, the, the TB data is as recorded by Barb. We haven't adjusted it in any way. It's just um, the same that you would call up if you were to uh, do the same data runs. We talk about da digital data at an impression level. That is it's essentially served. It doesn't have to be rendered. It doesn't have to be viewable, but it is data that is served. We also look at the data for digital for 50% completed views of the advert and 100% completed views of the advert because that data is freely available by these large digital platforms. And it creates a really interesting angle when we look at what digital can add to TV. The variables, we talk about reach, which is the proportion of the target audience who saw the campaign. And we talk about ratings, the weight of the advertising campaign itself. And like I said, the online data from Audience Project was fused with the offline, the barb data via TechEdge. So armed with a wall of spreadsheets, I sat down a couple of weeks ago and went, right, what do we find? I break everything down into core age brains. Reasonably, reasonably big, 10 years, it gives a, a reasonably strong sample. And this is the maximum level of coverage achieved by the campaigns within the study. Bear in mind that for digital, this is at impression level. So for 16 to 24s, we know that TV is struggling a little bit. And anecdotally, we know that digital is very good for this sort of audience. YouTube peaked at about 80% reach for a campaign for 16 to 24s. Facebook was around 50%, and the biggest TV campaign was around 65%. And we know that this is a really, really core cool audience, uh, hard one to, to reach, and it took an awful lot of ratings to get to that level on TV. So that kind of fits in with what we would have thought uh, at the start of the study. For 25, 34s, we see actually all three key platforms sit very, very close together. And 35, 44s, we start to see TV move away at this point. And then we enter TV's real heartland, the strong point where actually TV drives an awful lot more reach than the digital channels. Now, we don't know if this is because brands uh, weren't targeting these audiences. We don't know if it's an inherent bias in the way that these channels deliver. But this is where we see a real break apart between, uh, between the, the, the platforms. So let's get on to one, uh, one of my favorite uh, topics, which is reach curves. Um, my wife, when she first met me, said to her friends, my, uh, my boyfriend's in advertising, he's a geek, not a creative. Um, so bear that in mind. So this is a reach curve for, for TV. And this is taken from 30 brands, 10 who trade 1634s, 10 who trade house people with children, 10 who trade ABC1. So we've got the three broad trading audiences covered. Actually, when you, when you put the three <laughs> cover curves on top of each other, they, they, they sit very, very close. There's no differentiation in how coverage builds for 16 to 24 is irrespective of, of which audience you, you trade. So there's our TV. That, that's our benchmark for 16 to 24 s For YouTube, the, the average curve sits somewhere above that. Again, that's impression level. For Facebook, it's very much the same as television. So we can start to see differentiation becoming between, between the two things. But again, it's, uh, there's the floor of averages, as Andrew Shelley likes to say. Um, let's look at the maximum that can be achieved. So this is the, this is the highest level of reach that was recorded for a, uh, for a YouTube campaign. And this is the highest level of reach that was recorded for a Facebook campaign. So actually, so the potential for these two platforms to deliver equal levels of reach is very true. And actually, if we then look at the minimum curve, YouTube operates in a much, much narrower band. And again, this is all skippable. There was one advertiser who ran non-skippable. It's not a big enough sample to put into the, put into the study, but, but there's some interesting findings. So the YouTube is, is very, very close. And then we see Facebook. The Facebook minimum is much, much lower. And actually, there's a, there's a document uh, that Facebook have um, which talks about how to incorporate Facebook into marketing mix modeling. And within that, they say there are, there, are, you know, there are different ways you can trade Facebook. You can buy lots of impressions. You will get lots of reach, but your ad completion won't be very high at all. Or you can buy much, much lower coverage, and people will watch your ad, and the cost will be a lot higher. So this is probably what we're seeing within this. We've got different brands trading Facebook in different ways. Let's look at TV's heartland. 45 to 54 is on the left-hand side, 55 to 64 is on the right-hand side. And, and suddenly we see TV. Just as we saw on the early chart with the, with the maximum coverage, we see that the reach levels um, on a par or better than the digital channels for television in its own right. So at an impression level, 
YouTube operates within a much narrower band. Facebook coverage at all ages operates across a much wider band. You get much, much variation. So understanding how you're buying Facebook and what the implications are for coverage and completion rate will be key going forwards. The TV reach is comparable or better than YouTube um, and Facebook for 45 pluses. For the lighter viewer, the younger viewer, both digital channels offer potentially greater potential for efficient reach build than television. It probably comes as no surprise. And at low levels of reach, and this is one of the questions that was first asked by one of the participating brands, he said, can I get to 20 or 30% more quickly using digital than I can using television? And yes, there were some examples within that, but only up to about 20 or 30%. After that, TV takes over. But again, bear in mind, this is at an impression level. So it has the question, are all impressions equal? Now, so this is where we take data from TVision from the US, and this is the average level of attention to a 30 second ad based on ads that are viewed. So just under 14 seconds. And that's not including if people then look away from the screen and then listen to the audio uh, as, as the ad is playing as well. And then uh, Mike and Lumen very kindly provided the attention numbers for all the other digital platforms. So we can see that one of the reasons why TV probably performs so well from ROI studies both now and in the past is actually there is a far greater level of attention being paid to the TV advert than it is on digital platforms, press or out of home. And actually, if we then bring in a quote from Dave Trott, talking about advertising as he would do, the question is, will anyone even notice it? So being able to tie attention into these metrics gives us a completely different way of looking at things, not just, not just taking the data at face value, but looking at how people actually consume this and how it then encodes itself into the memory and hopefully builds the brand for the long term. And that means that not all coverage is, is equal in our mind. <clears throat> so we took two campaigns. There's a younger targeted campaign, and we look at, it, look at their figures for 16 to 24s. And we took an older targeted campaign, realizing that I'm now older than that, uh, and that's 35 to 44 year olds. How does the data stack up? So at its impression level, the TV campaign got 52% reach. Facebook had 72% reach, and Facebook 59% reach. But when we then apply the 50% completion rate, and we have to leave, we, we debated long and hard about whether we should adjust TV numbers, but Barb is Barb, so we, we leave it as it is. So at 50% completion, YouTube drops from 72% to 26% reach. And this is before we start to look at incremental reach. Facebook goes from 59 to 2%. Again, 40% of Facebook adverts are TV commercials. If you think about the way that you consume Facebook, it is a flick, it is a flick. Adverts are running for 10, 20 seconds on these platforms. So 2% reach for Facebook. And then when we look at 100% completion, we see 52% for TV, 16 for YouTube, and Facebook becomes 0 point something. Now this is for the young audience, and the young audience is <coughs> are obviously moving towards those digital channels, but TV has a very, very strong part to play in underpinning the coverage for these brands. Let's move to the older targeted, and I'll bring it all in at once, just for excitement. Uh, so 70% on telly, 74 for YouTube, 26 for Facebook. Slightly different targeting, but when we look at the 100% completion level, the figures are much, much lower. YouTube 9% and Facebook again at just over zero. But that's not to say that digital cannot do a job in helping increase reach for TV campaigns. This summarizes all the brands in the study and we, we, the, the document which will go live this afternoon, there were five advertisers, there were 15 campaigns within there. It's not an, exhaust, uh, not an exhaustive sample. There are some very, very clear trends. There are some big differences as well. But across the brands in the sample, for 16 to 34s, if you buy 150 ratings with digital on top, you can add about four points of unique cover. At 250 ratings, it's six points. At 300, it's about seven points. At 400 ratings, obviously that's a long period of time for 16 to 34 advertisers these days, that's eight points of additional coverage. If we look at our norms, we can see that a curve uh, with digital on top Essentially, it goes back to a level of coverage from 2013. So you can, get, you basically, you can shift your coverage um, back in time six years if you add digital on top of everything. For housekeepers and children, for ABC One ads, the numbers are lower. But again, we don't know it's, whether it's because the brands weren't overtly targeting those audiences. 
but you can see that TV actually does a fantastic job at reaching those audiences. It's only a point or two, up to three points for housekeepers and children, and the same up to four points for ABC One adults. And again, most of this is driven by YouTube. That's where the unique viewers are coming from. Now, I mentioned right at the start that we have Spotify, we have Twitter, and we have SDV Player in the sample. Um, this is, just to give you an idea, so th th this is one brand used Spotify and Twitter, one brand used STV player. But again, the numbers are interesting, they're directional, and they warrant further investigation. For Spotify, the brand's target audience was about 35 to 54. And this is the unique coverage that a very, very heavyweight TV campaign saw on top of it, purely from Spotify. Well targeted, and an extra couple of points of reach. It's really hard to find a TV spot that will do that at this level. For Twitter, the numbers are much lower. Um, and again, knowing the, the consumption of those adverts, and I, I know an awful lot of those were skipped through and were done without the sound being on. So there's a, there's a quality issue for some of these platforms as well. And finally, STV player. This is data purely for Scotland. But again, we see unique coverage. Um, and it's coming at the younger age range. So the, the, the anecdotal evidence that, that younger viewers are switching away from linear TV, watching broadcast of VOD, is backed up by some of this data. Again, it's a massive TV campaign, and it would be lovely if we can actually start to do this sort of thing with ITV Hub, all four, and Sky. So to summarize, at the most basic impression level, TV, YouTube, and Facebook all have the potential to deliver similar levels of reach for under 45s. The brands in the study show that for over 45s, TV is unrivaled and remains so. You can achieve incremental reach using digital video channels, particularly for younger audiences. And that is true at all weights of advertising. And there are instances where digital campaigns can build reach more quickly than TV does at low weights of coverage. But once you focus in the quality of engagement with that copy and that platform, online video may not be enough to close the coverage gap. So as brands, things to consider. Before you do anything, understand what your coverage gap is. We, we had no idea when we started this study what it was going to show, and it was fascinating as the, as the results came through. Take a more granular approach to measurement. Don't just take impressions at face value. What does it mean? What's the drop-off rate? How is that changing by audience? Where are your ads on YouTube going out? Which channels are they going out on? Don't, don't just take the audience as a, as a basic. Um, approach online video differently. Specifically, look at all the different ways you can trade the platform. It may cost you a multiple to, cost, to, to trade non-skippable on YouTube, but if you end up with much higher reach levels and much greater incremental coverage, surely that's a benefit. And make the right creative for the right platform. TV adverts on Facebook don't seem to garner an awful lot of attention. And new structured testing to, uh, to understand how your brand can benefit from this activity. And what of television? Well, I asked one of the BDs in, in effects from us last week, I said, well, what, where's television? What do you see television at? And he said, it's simple, it's Usain Bolt. He said, it's, it's not quite as good as it used to be, but it gets a hell of a lot of attention. And there's an awful lot of people who are trying to take its place, but they can't match its legacy. Thank you.